Konnichiwa, friends and family. This is Stefan, and as most of you probably are very well aware at this point, I just got back from a two-week vacation in Japan, and uh, in order to kind of share some of the, the pictures and the stories in a little bit more multimedia fashion, I thought maybe I'd put together a little slideshow and some voiceover for you, so thank you for following along. Arigato, as they would say in Japan. Um, and this is this presentation here is particularly on the first week that I spent in Japan because there are kind of two different vacations. Um, the first of which uh, was in Hokkaido, the North Island, and the second which was in Honshu, and I'll get into the geography there in a second. But thanks for following along. I appreciate it, and um, I hope some of these pictures inspire you to visit Japan. It was uh, almost certainly the, the most fantastic vacation I've ever taken, um, the most charming and wonderful place I've ever visited. And uh, the people, the food, um, the vistas, everything about it, I, I hope this inspires you to um, take a trip yourself because it is absolutely unique in this world and I 100% loved it. So, Hokkaido, Japan, February 5th through 12th, 2017. All right, your tour guides here. So, on your left, you have Dr. Stephen Borland, my good friend. Um, and my, me there on the right, Stefan Richards, and some random Japanese guy in the middle there. So uh, we were, uh, Steve and I planned this trip months ago to uh, join up with some uh, friends of his um, to do some snowboarding in Hokkaido. So um, him and I took the trip together, had a great time. So just to let you know a little bit about Hokkaido, Hokkaido is Japan's largest and most northern prefecture. There you see it in the green circle. It's very mountainous and extremely cold in the winter snowy um, and there's actually not a lot of people there it's not very densely populated for a place like japan which is very densely populated but uh, as you can see world-class gnar shredding they get consistently deep um, light snow um, coming off the sea of japan and it is kind of becoming world renowned although it hasn't always been for uh, the amazing quality and amount of snow they get so as uh, if you know me and you know how much I love snowboarding, um, this is kind of a, a dream to be able to visit somewhere like Hokkaido. All right, zooming in a little bit on the island there, um, you'll notice that there are um, some towns, not very many big towns, but Sapporo is Hokkaido's main city and sits within close proximity to dozens of resorts. Um, they have a world famous snow festival every year, which Steve and I were unaware of when we booked our tickets, but it happened that we showed up the very week that it was happening. And so we did get to, on two separate, uh, the beginning and the end of the trip, uh, get to uh, see a lot of the snow festivals, their 68th annual snow festival. It was, as you can see from some of the pictures coming up here in a sec, uh, it was a spectacular event to kind of surprisingly be in town for. Um, and zooming in a little bit more into that, um, if you look into the green box there, zooming in a little bit more into the southwest corner of the, of the island, um, you can see Sapporo on the green um, circle, and then in the, where the blue arrow is at, and there's nothing there on the map, but that is where Kiroro um, Snow World is at, and I'll, we'll get to Kiroro in a second. It's an amazing place. Niseko is kind of like their major resort on the island. It's kind of like their Breckenridge, if you will. And then to the east of Niseko is Rusutsu, which is another... Um, so our trip was basically to, uh, planned um, in Hokkaido to visit those three resorts. And step five, as you can see there, stay forever, which I certainly could have done. All right, on our way. So this is leaving from LA to uh, Tokyo. Um, we had a, about a 12 hour flight. Um, the first thing we re noticed on um, the flight over was the um, Japanese cuisine was, uh, was quite amazing actually. I mean, even on the plane, we were surprised by the quality um, of the food and uh, the amount of fish and delicious vegetables and noodles. I mean, the, our, our uh, plane trip food was actually awesome. And it, we, we flew ANA, so they, it's the uh, Japanese airline. So um, their in-flight food was spectacular. So it was just a taste of what was to come, literally. Um, then the next morning, so we landed in, um, in uh, Sapporo and we stayed at a little kind of airport hotel, nothing really special. And then the next morning we realized what the difference between a Japanese uh, continental breakfast and an American continental breakfast of maybe a bagel and some orange juice and coffee. Uh, we really got to see what the difference that was there. Um, we had curries, um, hot pot foods. Uh, they had kind of more tr uh, Western style breakfast stuff, but a lot of fish, a lot of sushi, a lot of rice. Um, uh, it was a spectacular breakfast. It was just the first meal basically we had when we landed, and um, we were already kind of blown away. It was um, it was a pleasant surprise. Um, and then after the first day of our, uh, or after our first meal in the morning at the uh, Continental Breakfast, we headed down to Sapporo and we um, got to see our first glimpse of the Ice Festival, which um, as you can see from some of these photos, 
uh, they take pretty seriously. Um, it was really impressive. Some of these were, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't say 100 foot tall, but at least 50, 60 foot tall ice sculptures in the middle of town, snow sculptures. Um, as you can see, they have the Arc de Triumph there. Um, they have a kind of a Japanese, up to the top right, a Japanese, uh, like, uh, I think it's like a Japanese myth story um, with a, a kind of a sword, swordsman slaying somebody. Uh, an ice castle. They had a. They were real big into Star Wars. Star, saw Star Wars, Star Wars stuff everywhere, and then kind of like a Japanese style temple down there on the right. But um, this is just a real small taste of what they had at the festival because it was. We we visited it for two full days and we still didn't see everything. Um, they had a whole street shut down with ice sculptures, uh, as you can see in the top left there, that were just gorgeous and extremely ornate. Um, a lot of detail, as you'll see with everything Japanese, um, the, they are very big on details and quality, and um, it w really came through in their um, in their snow festival because everything was just really impressive. Um, got Godzilla there to the right, of course. Uh, the top there, you can kind of see. I was trying to take a panoramic of all the snow sculptures, kind of on one side of this park, but I wasn't even able to capture them all. There were literally hundreds of them. Uh, lining this park um, from East Odori Park from east to west in downtown Sapporo and um, there there was so many you could you could hardly see them all truthfully we, we wandered all day long and I'm not sure that we even did see them all but uh, really cool stuff I think and it all started the whole snow, snow festival started 68 years ago with high school students kind of um, just uh, throwing together like these ice sculptures downtown and it kind of morphed into something bigger over time and this year it's a world-class event draws millions of people but the main thing about the snow festival is not even the snow. It was that we got an intro, a kind of 101, on some amazing samples of Japanese food, which was, I can say right off the bat, if there was anything um, that I'd like to you know, emphasize with anybody who'd be interested in going to Japan, it is the food. Um, the food is out of this world. It is all extremely high quality. Um, you will be surprised constantly by um, things you find, even in convenience stores, festivals. Like it doesn't even have to be a fine meal that you go out to. Like everything is just super high quality. Their dairy is super good. Their milk, um, ice cream, um, seafood, as you can see in some of these pictures up on the top right. You got some um, sea scallops there, grilling on a charcoal grill. Um, those were amazing. They were so big you could hardly get them in one bite. Um, a lot of fried chicken, surprisingly. Um, their fried chicken was awesome. I don't, I did not expect that. Uh, frozen bananas, as you can see there on the bottom left. Um, but we basically ate all day long that first day, which was was exactly what I was looking for. Um, you can see me with some dumplings there. I think those were crab dumplings on a stick. They were steaming really, uh, really good when I first got them because it was super cold out and um, they were just ooh, they were piping hot and delicious. Fried chicken in the middle there. I'm 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 mowing on. Steve's got a. Uh, an oyster there, you may think that's an extraordinary extraordinary oyster. It's the biggest I've ever seen, but um, the, all their oysters are that size, which is, I, I'd never seen anything, I'd never seen oysters like that. They were kind of a whole new thing for me. I've eaten oysters before, never really cared for them, and yet I kind of, uh, kind of changed my opinion um, after eating some of theirs. They were totally different. They were just delicious. They were one of the best things I ate there, honestly. And down there in the middle, um, it was like a grilled cab, uh, crab body with like, uh, with the crab meat kind of layered in there, and they, they used a blowtorch to sear it on top. It was uh, fun to watch and amazing to eat, really delicious. Um, this is uh, the, one of the crab shacks. I mean, there was hundreds and hundreds of food vendors, and we ate uh, probably a good dozen to two dozen of them uh, throughout the first day. Um, we had snails. Uh, those were an experience, not necessarily my favorite, but they are they were um, <laughs> kind of different, kind of kind of uh, kind of fun. Um, Big crabs, huge crabs. I mean, their, their crabs were just enormous, unbelievable. As nighttime rolled around, we continued to eat. Um, we went for the hot food more uh, at night. It, was, it got real cold at night. Um, those gyoza on the left are like soup-filled dumplings. They were unbelievable. Um, we ordered several order of those. That, that was the first of many. Once we got one taste, we couldn't stop. And the ramen. We got our first taste of real Japanese ramen um, while at the festival, too. Um, ramen is a whole other thing there. I think Americans have this conception of a plastic bag of, you know, as I always have too, a plastic little cube of ramen that you heat up. Yeah, that's kind of the basics, but the um, the noodles are um, just uh, a whole different thing there. The broth is way hardier, and Hokkaido is kind of known for their um, particular uh, type of, of ramen that's really hearty, 
Um, it's it's uh, got a lot of seafood and uh, seaweed even I think in the broth, uh, but it's just um, it's really it's extraordinary. And if you're if you're feeling empty, if you're feeling if you're feeling cold, get a bowl of, bowl of the Hokkaido ramen, and um, it'll change it'll change you around. It'll save your life. Um, that night, um, we actually ended up going up into the, the Sapporo TV tire, tower, as you can see there in the bottom right. That was the only picture I got of it during the day. But at night, it's all lit up, and you can take an elevator to the top, and they have an observation deck. And so Steve and I decided to do the tourist thing and while we were there and go up. But it was, as you can see in that leftmost photo, um, you can see everything from the ice skating rink lit up there in the bottom um, to some... Uh, Major uh, major sculptures going um, up if you're tr if you're looking upwards, and then right in the middle of that really blinding white thing is the snow snowboarding and sn and skiing jump that they set up in the middle of the park, where they had a, a handful of events. We probably saw three different jump events, um, and then way off in the distance, past all those lights and all those snow sculptures that go on and on and on. If you look way to the top of the photo, you'll see that there's actually like a lit up hill. That's um that's a ski hill right outside of town. You can you could like ride your bike there. I mean it's super close. Um, but you could actually see it from the top of the tower. It's directly across downtown. It's pretty cool. Got Ferris wheels, all kinds of fun stuff. Very, very colorful city at night. There's Steve and I at the top. Selfie. Um, I'm sitting in a little temple thing. I'm not sure what's going on there. And uh, they had a stage lit up at night with a bunch of uh, J-pop singers, which uh, was pretty entertaining. All right, next day. Um, so the next day, Tuesday, was the day that we were headed up into the mountains to... Uh, head to our first resort, Kuroro Snow World. Um, there's our rented car there. We had a pretty sweet uh, Forester. We, the steering wheels are on the right. You drive on the left side of the road. And um, the only confusing thing about it is the turn signal. Uh, the turn signal will get you every darn time because they switch the side of the turn signal. We even sprung for the snowboarding rack, so, you know, we're fancy. Um, the way up, we started to kind of get a real understanding of how deep the snow is on the island. Um, they have. If you look at that photo on the bottom left there, you'll notice that um, they have uh, arrows pointing down onto the road from a, like directly above. That's because the snow comes down so heavy and so hard um, often that the there's literally no way to see anything off to the side of the roads. You you pretty much just follow the arrows, stay right below the arrows because um, yeah, they, they have they get. Um, they get some of the deepest snow in the world. It's pretty amazing to see. Um, and we kind of hit it on, on an off year. January and February 2017 were not their strongest snow season totals. Um, and yet, uh, when you step off to the side of the road, you can see it's six to eight feet and um, still fairly early season. So um, from what I see, they're getting hammered right now with snow. I'm very jealous. Uh, it's late February now, but there's always next year. Um, so we made it to Kuroro. It's actually super close to Sapporo. It's only like an hour away or so. Drove up there on Tuesday morning. Um, there we are headed in. You can see how deep it is. Uh, Kuroro is known as the snow factory because they get just hammered by storms coming off of the Sea of Japan there, and it just kind of cycles over and over and over again. And even if the resorts around it don't get anything, it seems Kuroro can pick up significant totals. Um, there in the top right, you can see two of our buddies that we were meeting, Justin and Joe. Uh, they were both there for an emergency medicine conference. Uh, that they were going to be attending later in the week um, and they had gone last year and talked us into this whole trip So Joe's kind of the reason we showed up and uh, real good guys There's one more guy Adam you'll see in some photos later. So it was Adam Joe Justin and me and Steve for that first week um, But uh, yeah, we had some fun uh, Here's some pictures from the first day our first uh, first kind of half day of snowboarding a couple things about it um, The base was incredibly deep the snow is incredibly light the trees are like glaciated There's so much snow on them. Um, they like they pick up these like six eight foot wide blocks of snow in the tops of them and they just kind of look otherworldly they're just very snow blasted by the by the storms coming off the ocean and as you can also see in this photo there's not a lot of people there i don't think we really waited in lines most um i think only maybe once or twice did we really wait in a line at kuroro it was uh it was fairly empty um pretty consistently you could just shuttle runs one after another and this run is uh one off to the left that we we rode probably 90 percent of the time because it's just un unending lines of of deep powder and, and you just all you can have fun on it all day so i forget the lift was named but um is off to the left so after our first day of snowboarding um we were supposed to go to niseko grand harafu which is kind of like the breckenridge of their um resorts on the island it's kind of big with several bases and lots of hotels very touristy um, well, we got we got some very sage guidance from our friends who had been before, um, and they said, you know, you should stay at Kuroro. It's gonna it's gonna snow here. There's gonna be nobody here. We you, we should uh, we should all hang out here. Thank God we did, um, because as you'll see with the pictures for the next day, we got we got a significant amount of snow. 
on the next day, overnight and into the next day. But not only that, but we, we stayed at probably the nicest hotel I've ever stayed at in my life, the Carrero Tribute Portfolio Hotel, which here are some pictures of. Not all of them are mine. Some of them I snagged from the internet. But um, this is what it looks like. It was like a samurai castle. It was enormous. It was elegant. It was beautiful. Um, everything about it was, was um, really five stars. It was They had restaurants galore. I don't even know how many restaurants they had, probably six to ten. Uh, they had a um, onsen. Uh, which I think I've seen. Yeah, here's some photos of the onsen. I was not able to, you're not able to take photos in the onsen, obviously, a bunch of naked folks walking around. Uh, but I did snag some off the internet. But this is kind of what it looked like. They had um, a, probably a 30 person cedar sauna inside that just smelled wonderful. Um, in this bottom right picture, you'll see uh, there's a bunch of chairs in the background. Those are all like massage chairs. So, like, they were awesome because they actually massage like your calves and your forearms. They, had, they were really sophisticated. Like everything in Japan, it's kind of like futuristic. Uh, but they were super nice to sit in. They had outdoor pools, indoor pools, cold pools, warm pools. Um, I mean, you could seriously probably fit 100, 150 people in this, in just the men's onsen. Um, comfortably, and it was um, it was it was it was an amazing experience. It was uh, I think only about nine bucks, eight bucks, and uh, you could go back all day. And it was just um, an ex extraordinarily relaxing end to a long day of snowboarding. Uh, so yeah, um, first night um, in Kuroro, we decided to drive down to Otaru, which is kind of down on the sea. It's only about a half hour away, maybe forty minutes down to by the ocean, um, to go to Paul's. Uh, um, I forget what it's called. Uh, there's a name for the for the how you grill the food in this manner, um, but his name was not Paul. The dude did not speak any English. He was like 80 years old, um, and was back in the kitchen by himself cooking for us five guys who strolled in on a Tuesday night. And um, I gotta say, the food was spectacular. We uh, put out a little grill. You put your vegetables and your meat on there, and the meat's so high quality you can even eat it raw. I'm not saying that. The raw beef was really my favorite thing I ate while I was in Japan, but it's, um, you know, win in Rome. Um, but we had a ball. We had a great time that night. Um, and it was kind of kind of a spectacularly local and behind-the-scenes kind of uh, look at the town because it was you literally wouldn't even know it was a restaurant if you were driving by. Nothing was in English. Um, it was cool. We had fun with it. Next day, best night of snowboarding of my life, easily. Um, snow, they report, Kiruru always under-reports their snow. They said 22 centimeters. Um, so, you know, you're talking, what, 10 inches there, so, uh, not the case. I mean, it was way steep all over the mountain. It had just been snowing all night long, and it, you can see that tree behind me in the middle there. I mean, the trees are just, like, just sunk in, in powder. Um, I mean, there was just, it was unbelievable. It was a thrill. It was so much fun. Nobody on the mountain, um, just unending powder lines. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. It was exactly what Steve and I were looking for when we went to Japan, um, a powder day like this. It was just, uh, can't beat it. I'll never forget it. That night, in order to celebrate, we decided to go out to one of the nice restaurants there in the in the hotel. They had a pretty high quality sushi place where we had our own room, and you know you take your shoes off and you sit on the floor, and you have your own room. And we just ordered everything on the on the darn menu. Um, on the bottom there, you can see that's a hot pot. Uh, basically, they bring out this big uh, tub of, or big pot of I think miso based broth, and then you throw in a whole crab and mushrooms and all kinds of veggies and tofu and uh, you just throw it all in and let it cook right in front of you and boil right in front of you and it's a great experience you kind of pick out your own and serve your serve your friends and um, we had quite a bit of sushi um, as you can see they, they they do everything not only high quality but also visually uh, stunning just just gorgeous meal it was it was um, it was a lovely meal with friends we had a great time and then um, Next day, uh, we had uh, all the leftover powder from the prior day, and um, in addition to that, a bluebird sky conditions. It was just gorgeous, just sunshine from from volcanoes to sea. And um, we were actually first on lift that that uh, the sign there in the middle in preparation. We were the first ones there, so we got up early the next morning and hit it hard and had a great day. It was just a spectacular, um, sunny, deep snow, you know, just just everything we wanted. So. Um, you know, days two and three on the mountain were just were just were just perfect, absolutely perfect. And as you can see here, this is kind of from the top of that one lift I was just describing that we, we spent all day on. If you look on the left there, that's Mount, Mount Yote, which you'll see later when we get to Rusutsu. It's right there in front of your face, but you can kind of see it just peeking over the ridge on the other side of the resort. And then on the right, if you look hard on the right, you can see um, the Sea of Japan um, hanging out there to the right. I've never been snowboarding anywhere where you could see the ocean like that. It was. It was kind of strange getting up there that day after a snowy day the prior day and then having clear conditions and being able to see all the way out to the ocean. It was cool. It was just a gorgeous day. I had so much fun. Uh, this is what 
Think about the last meal you had on the mountain in Colorado. Think about what was, what was it? Maybe a burger or some fries or maybe a candy bar or a p slice of pizza or something like that. Well, Japan does things right. They when you go up to the uh, lunch spot on the mountain, um, you don't you don't even you don't you don't want a slice of pizza. You don't want all that crap. They so you got curry, you got hot pot, um, that thing in the middle that. Why does it look too appetizing in retrospect? But uh, rice omelet with beef sauce. Um, rice omelet's kind of a big thing there. It was amazing. It's kind of like a uh, uh, like a rice fill from a burrito wrapped in um, in an omelet with this kind of gravy sauce on top of it. It was spectacular. And the thing on the left of it was kind of like this baked uh, fried chicken or maybe it was pork cutlet. I don't recall with um, an egg and. Uh, potatoes and stuff in it. It was and a mochi ball, of course. You always got to get a mochi ball or a donut if they don't have mochi ball. Um, but the hot pot was phenomenal. The curry, I could eat that every day of my life. Um, but it was all very reasonably priced, really, um, you know, fast and convenient and just delicious. Really high quality food on the mountain. Uh, so here's some more pics from uh, the Karora Resort. There's Steve in the room. I needed to take a picture of the toilet because the toilets in Japan are freaking phenomenal. Um, the heat, they have heated seats, uh, multiple settings for the bidet, um, which is also heated. And when you sit down, it's really funny. They have um, like water noise, like that that uh, that kind of provides white noise for the bathroom, if you can imagine. Um, just like. They're like they're like space age toilets, just amazing, absolutely, and they're everywhere. It's like every 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 hotel room has a ten thousand dollar toilet in it. I couldn't believe it. Um, and that view from on the bottom left is from our uh, deck that we had on the second night, which was pretty spectacular. These are also views from our deck. Um, I think it was in the morning that we woke up the next day, um, looking towards the resort. We could see all the way to the resort. It was it was just a, a an amazingly peaceful place. Uh, more pics. Oh, actually, no, this is a, uh, so um, we left Kororo, um, the on, I suppose it was Thursday. Did we leave on Thursday? Yeah, I think that's right. And headed to Rusutsu, which is that other report. We, we totally skipped Naseko, said never mind. Um, and uh, when we got to uh, the, we, we, we got the suite at the West End. I should say Steve's mom got us the suite at the, rest, at the West End because we had just a regular room and she decided we actually needed the suite. So I'm not going to argue with that. It was amazing accommodations. Two, two levels, um, bedroom upstairs. They had two Murphy fold-out beds downstairs, couch, bar, great view. Um, that's our hotel looking from, from the road on the up top left there. Um, that night we decided, uh, we met up with the other guys, um, they came and met us at Rusutsu because that's actually where the conference was at um, that they were attending and so um, they met us there on Thursday and we actually we went out for um, dinner that night. We There was really kind of not too many options because we were, it's kind of like isolated this resort so we walked down the road a bit and there were three places and only one of them had room for us and thankfully it was Goofy's because it was awesome. We had such a great, we had such a great dining experience there. Um, but, you know, it was a little ways of a walk, so um, on the left you can see I'm um, walking there. We got some juice boxes, which in Japan you can buy with sake in them. Um, I'm just saying, is amazing. Um, so we got our sake boxes <laughs> from the convenience store. The convenience stores are something else altogether. Their convenience store game is on point. Um, but uh, we, we got our little sake boxes and walked maybe a mile down the road. And then ended up sitting at the bar at Goofy's, which was perfect because if you could see the kitchen was right there in front of us. So we just ordered things one by one. They had a great like kind of tapas style menu. Um, that's at, so on that picture on the right, that's Justin in the front, and then Adam and Joe and Steve and then I. So um, we uh, we had a great time. That was a great dinner. And here's some of the things we ate. Um, we had some fresh oysters with lemon. Um, again, the best oysters I've ever had. And I never really liked oysters. Now I, I can't get enough of them. Um, not 100% sure what that thing on the top right is. I don't remember. Uh, but the, the, uh, on the t bottom left is like a seared, I think it was a sweet potato or a yam, um, pan seared. It was delicious and crispy. And then on the bottom right, those are mussels, um, in like a kind of a rich hoisin sauce. It was, that was probably my favorite thing we had that night. Um, the mussels were just out of this world. All right, and so Rusutsu. This is the view from the top of Rusutsu. Um, it's Rusutsu is a little more centrally located in the island. If you look on the bottom left there, it looks like almost like the ocean, but that's actually a lake, like a volcanic volcanic lake that's right outside the resort. It's called Lake Toya, and it, that what looks like the shore on the left there of it is actually an island, and that's like a sunk it's sunken middle part of a volcano in a caldera. It's a I I didn't know if we were going to be able to see it from the top, and then we get up there and I was like, boom, it was right there. It was it was beautiful. 
Um, at the top left, there's a, uh, you can see that that's at the top of the mountain, the peak. There, they put bells at the top, and you're supposed to go up there with a friend or a loved one and make a wish and ring the bell, I think twice. Um, but uh, they, you can find them at the top of all the mountains that we saw, at least at Karoro and at the top of both of the peaks at, um, at Rusutsu. And then from, on the right there, you'll see two different views of Mount Yote, and that's the, that's the big um, volcano. I think it's about 6,000 feet right in the middle of the island. And, if you, and then Niseko would be looking at, the, looking at the mountain. It would be just to the left. You can kind of see some of the runs in that bottom picture. And then what you can also see in that bottom picture is that there's another side of the resort across the highway that is um, smaller. Um, it's kind of more of just like a park scenario with, um, oh, there's Mount Yote. Yeah. Yep. It was beautiful. Um, but this is looking from the other side, what I was just describing, that uh, park side, and um, it's got a lot more going on over there. It's got a uh, pretty cool little um, amusement park um, that we had seen from the hotel and everything, but we didn't really realize that when you were snowboarding on that side of the mountain that that, that, um, that, that amusement park was, was kind of just off to the right of the base, and so it was it, this is something I'll never forget. It was just uh, kind of a whimsical end to our snowboarding adventures in Japan because this was actually our last day of snowboarding. It ended up being our last day. We, we decided to call it after Friday because the snow wasn't tremendous. Um, but uh, Steve and I decided to keep going after the rest of the guys decided to kind of call it for the day because they had to do their conferences, uh, presentations, and everything. So Steve and I go to the other side of the mountain just to see what it looked like. So we took the gondola over. There's like a series of gondolas. It's really qu kind of an ornate setup. They have mini gondolas and trams and monorails even. Um, and so we ended up on the other side of the mountain, and we're kind of snowboarding off to the right. And we keep veering right, and there's no lines. Or I'm sorry, no, no like... Um, fences or you know like um you know out of bounds lines or anything of the nature of that sort so we kind of just veering up keep veering off to the right off to the right thinking wow we're finding all this fresh snow we're finding all this fresh snow and then there's it becomes this moment where i realize we're going to end up right in this damn amusement park aren't we <laughs> we're going to get stuck and probably never get out of there and we're probably going to lose our passes because we're, we're trespassing um well that's it was like this moment of fear i was like oh shit we should not be here and then it turned into one of the coolest things i've ever done um we ended up snowboarding right through the amusement park which was pretty rad um it was just deep snow all over the place um and i thought we were going to get stuck but we were able to kind of cruise through and um towards the end ended up walking out but the snow was like i said not super fresh so it was packed down enough we could walk out um, but it was such a unique experience. I've never, I, I just, it was thrilling. It was so much fun to just, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden be, uh, going from, oh shit, I'm in the wrong place to, oh wow, this is awesome and a unique experience. Um, so we had a ball with it. So you know what? We did it again. Uh, we ended up doing it twice, uh, because it was just, it was too good to pass up a second opportunity. There's me with the little octopus, uh, ride in the background and then, um, Another ride off to the right there in the sun setting from the hotel room later on as we were looking down in the carnival or the uh, amusement park that we just shredded, which was cool. Um, so the resort we stayed at um, in Rusutsu, which is the only one, it's a major one, but they have like this monorail that connects to this other side of the, this whole other like conference area and hotel on the other side of the highway. And I gotta say it was super, super weird. Um, like the whole, it was like a labyrinth of these like connected weird like 60s Disneyland, um, but Japanese style kind of weirdness. It was it was totally strange. Um, not to say that we didn't have an absolute ball there. Um, we did have a great time. Uh, you can see that's a two story carousel. Um, got a they, that thing on the left. I think I have a video of, but that tree lit up and sang a song, and it was the it was like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, you got your you got your puppy dog mobile. Um, I'd love to drive that. Didn't get a chance to. Um, and your ferocious looking pig on the merry-go-round, which is weird. Uh, we got taken out to dinner that night actually by the guys because they had extra, um, they had these passes to the, to the buffet, which was ironically called Oktoberfest. I'm not sure why it was an Oktoberfest themed buffet, but thankfully we got to tag along because it was, it was awesome. It was a feast. Um, their crab legs, um, you can see there on the left, just piles of crab, um, gyoza, I ate snail, uh, like uh, prawns, more scallops, I mean seafood galore. Um, you can see there on the bottom right, Steve's got one of those crab legs up against his arm, they're enormous. I've never eaten anything like it. Like I usually consider crab a waste of time because uh, you don't get hardly anything out of it. And um, those had like huge chunks of crab meat in them, they were amazing. That top right is a seafood, or I'm sorry, a sushi bar um, with masago and tuna and all kinds of stuff. There's the, uh, they had a lot of, 
like animatronics, like weird robots and stuff. And they had one that sang songs every 15 minutes or something on the stage with a bunch of bears. I'm not sure what was going on with that. The chef's kitchen had steak and all kinds of goodies. Um, I just, I couldn't take enough. I couldn't even capture it all in, in, in pictures. It was, uh, it was a feast. It was a proper feast. We ate, we ate very well that night. Um, and then um, after some, uh, have, we had some fun in Rusutsu that night on Friday. And then the next day we headed back to Sapporo for some more uh, snow festival shenanigans. And we, we got to see the the, uh, the snow jumps or the ski jumps. Um, they had a pretty cool setup. It was snowing really hard and they had music going and people doing tricks. Um, it was it was awesome. We went out to some bars that night. That's one of our buddies we made. He was a, he was a, he owned this bar we went into. He had a really great, great selection of uh, Japanese whiskeys, which I haven't even talked about, but the Japanese whiskeys are uh, extremely high grade, good cost. Um, they, it's like anything in Japan. The Japanese have taken something from, you know, um, from, from out, they've imported something from outside their country, refined it through process, and made it uh, a whole new amazing thing. And so we definitely tasted some Japanese uh, whiskeys that night. But that was the last night in Hokkaido for all of us, for the for the five of us. The the other four guys had to head back to the states the next day. Um, and then the next day I departed on my. Uh, second week of adventures, uh, taking the train down to Honshu and seeing some of the cities. And uh, so I hope that if you've watched this um, slide, if you've watched this slide so show, um, I, I would hope that uh, stick around and watch watch volume two because I got um, I got the second half of my trip coming up next. And so for now, Ren, my um, puppy niece, she says sayonara. I got to meet Ren on my way out to Japan from LA. I stopped through San Diego and saw my sister and her and her husband Scott. And I got to meet Rin, and she's a sweetie pie, so I needed to sneak a picture of her in here. She's a, she's a total doll. Um, she's even tinier than she looks there. But she says, sayonara for, the, for week one, and um, come back and follow me through week two. Goodbye.